welcome back to another video. Now, today I'm doing something a little bit different from my channel. If you've been around for a while, then you know that two years ago, exactly, I was in Costa Rica. Now, I went to Costa Rica with um, EF Education first for a um, language exchange. Like, I went there to study Spanish. Um, it was totally random. I went all by myself, all the way from Australia. And I've had a lot of questions over the last two and a half years. So before I even went, and then since I've been back, like, why did you go there? What was it like? Why did you pick Costa Rica? Why did you pick Spanish? Yada, yada, yada. What was the experience like? And since posting a few videos, like I did like a whole series while I was there, like I did a few vlogs like each week. And then I did like a room tour of like my accommodation. So if you want to go check those out, I'll have them linked up above and in the description box below. But yeah, basically since posting those videos, I've had quite a few people message me with questions asking about my trip, was it worth it? What did I think of the whole experience? So I thought, since it is exactly two years since I've been there, like two years ago today, I would have been in Costa Rica in my first week of the trip. So if you wanna know a little bit more about EF as a company and a little bit more about Costa Rica and what I thought of it, um, then just keep on watching this video. Now, I have a few other questions on Costa Rica specifically that I just wanna answer. First one is, is it safe? Now I, yes. For me, it was totally safe. Like I went there all by myself as a solo female traveler and I was fine. I, like I said, I was staying with, like in the building though, so like I wasn't completely by myself and I usually had someone with me, but I walked around the town at night by myself and didn't get murdered, so tick on the safety for that one. Um, it was, like Tamarindo, this, like the city itself is quite, well not city, the little area is like very touristy so I would be careful of being like ripped off and I probably wouldn't like I never walked around with like much money on me your room has like a little like a drawer with a lock on it so I kept like most of my cash in there because I didn't want to like have it stolen but I didn't have a problem I felt really safe and comfortable the whole time it was like the whole place is super chill it's like a beach surface town and everyone is super laid back and fun and it was just like like, Australia is really chill and laid back, but Costa Rica was, like, next level, like, chill. So, it was just, like, the best. Like, would... I definitely am going to go back and visit because I loved every minute of it. Now, currency. Mo like, literally almost everywhere, except maybe, like, the really small places, take US dollars. So, I saved, like, a dollar bill just because I thought it was funny because in Australia we don't have dollar bills. We have coins. Um, so, I save one of these rather than, like, converting it back to Australian money. But the local currency is the cologne or colones. I don't know. So they look like this. They look more like Australian money because they're like plasticky, not paper. But they're in the yeah, like millions. That's like one mil. But that was like the equivalent of like nothing. Like this is like big numbers for like small amounts. I can't remember off the top of my head the like conversion rates. But yeah, um, most places will take US dollars. So if you don't have if your local currency converter doesn't have colones, that's fine. Just get um, US dollars and you can either convert them when you're there at the bank or you can just like pay, like you could pay for things with US dollars and then they might give you colones as, a, as change. So it's like interchangeable. Most places will take both, but like maybe like small, small places would only take these, but I didn't find anywhere that only took colones. Pretty much like literally everywhere took US dollars because it's like, a tourist town and the weather was perfect other than the hurricane but like it was sunny warm every day like 30 degrees ish um, Celsius obviously I don't know what that is that's like 90 something in Fahrenheit if you're from the US but we speaking Celsius so it was like 30 ish like every single day a little bit humid but not too much like I quite enjoy humidity so if you hate humidity then maybe it's not for you because it's definitely a tropical type of place you can do snorkeling go to the beach like there was maybe only one day that was a bit too cold for the beach in the whole three weeks I was there so it was like perfect um sunny like I did get a little bit burnt while I was there but that's because I'm like super pale like it doesn't take much to burn me basically um so the weather was fabulous um language so I have a little note here to talk about the language because all of the shops pretty much speak English but if you can I would definitely recommend practicing your Spanish whenever you can because that's the whole point of being there 
other than the holiday and the fun and all that, but was to learn Spanish. So I wish I had like taken a little bit more care to actually speak Spanish in the shops, like when ordering things or when like buying bikinis and things, like I like asking if I had the other size or how much this costs, things like that in Spanish would have been great, but I didn't really do that because I just got nervous. Like I knew I knew the phrases, but when I got there, I just like panicked and like didn't do it. But the more you do it, the easier it's going to get. Um, but yeah, if you don't know a thing about, like if you don't know any Spanish before you get there, don't worry because pretty much everyone there speaks English. All right, so some recommendations for places to go. As far as like food or food goes, um, there are a few places like La Oveja Negra, which I mentioned before. So the black sheep is what it is in English translation. Um, that is actually a hostel. So if you want someone to stay before or after your stay at EF, I would highly recommend there. The people there are amazing. If Johnny's still there, ask for him um, because he, what did he do? He was the surfing instructor that I had. Um, he took me out surfing a few times and then we went to um, paddle boarding out to an island. So we went like on a quad bike to the paddleboard place and we got a paddleboard out to this little like island in the middle of the ocean and then we did snorkeling off the island and then paddleboarded back. So that was like an amazing day. Like highly, highly, highly recommend that. And that was through La Oveja Negra. They also make great food. It's like a bar at night time. They have like pool tables. Um, just It's just like an all round good time. And the guy that owns it, I forget his name, but he was pretty cool too. Like I liked him. He was pretty chill. Like everyone was just so laid back. Um, and he kept saying I look like Taylor Swift. And I was like, please stop. Like I really don't look like Taylor Swift. I think it was just that I was like, super pale and had the fringe and my hair was a bit more blonde back then I think than it is now so it was like I wore red lipstick one day and it was like Taylor Swift and then like for the rest of the time I was there I was always Taylor Swift Taylor Swift Taylor Swift I was like but you know it would it was fun <laughs> um other than that for bars there was La Palapa that was on the beach that's where we went the first night and they had like a fire show out the front it was amazing the cocktails there were really good um Highly recommend. And then El B is like a bar like right on the beach. I mean, so is La Palapa, but it was another like beach club type thing, like right on the sand. You could sit out, watch the sunset, get a cocktail. What a perfect way to end the night. Love that. Um, as far as other food places go, um, the Green Papaya, I think. It might have been the Green Papaya. Anyway, it's right by EF campus. So you like literally cross from the school through a park and it's like on the corner there and they've got like these gorgeous like um, swinging chairs which are kind of inconvenient to eat on but like for an Instagram shot would have been perfect. I wish I'd gotten a picture on them but I didn't because I don't know I wasn't really there with anyone who like knew how to take photos and I wasn't that into my Instagram at the time. I now am but yeah so like it's I didn't get like great photos there but you totally could. What a setup. And the sushi place I went to once on like a date was like um, Asian Fusion Bistro. That was really good. Um, as far as clubs at night, um, Aqua was great. Um, every night is ladies night and ladies drink free before midnight. So that was like, just like unheard of. Like you could never do that in Australia. Like, no. But there it was amazing. Like you could just get free drinks like until midnight and then leave. And you had like a free night out of drinking. So it was amazing. Um, there was one other place we went to. That I forget what it was called. Oh my god, if I can figure it out, I'll put it up on the screen. Um, that was a little bit further away, down on the beachfront, and it was amazing. Like, it was like more of like a club club. Um, it was a bit bigger, and yeah, it was pretty cool. Um, so I liked both of those. We like you could go out like literally any night because, it, like I said, it's a tourist place. So like you could go out on a, like the first Monday we were there, we went out to Aqua, and like it was a Monday night, and it was like going off. So that was fun. Um, Oh, other things to do. Um, like I said, we went to Monteverde. Um, luckily, one of the guys we were there with, who actually was like semi-dating while we were there. I, you know, summer flings and all that. Um, he was over 25. He was like 29 years old. So he could rent a car a lot easier than we could because we were. I was only 21 at the time and most of the other people were around my age. So it would have been a lot more expensive for us to like rent a car because of the insurance issues and all of that. So he rented the car under his name and we drove up to Monteverde which is the cloud forest. So we did zip lining up there. Um, where is it? 100% adventures. Um, it's apparently the longest, um, what's it called? Oh, this is the ATV. But it was the longest zip line in all of 
America or something. I don't know, but it was it was fun. Highly recommend. Other than that, you can also get like this map here. It's the handout, and it's just got like all of these places to go. And if you open it up, it's got like a full map of the city. But like, so that was where the canvas was and the beach is just through here. So it's actually like really close. You just have to walk through a bit of this and then you're out of the sand. So yeah, as far as like activities other than um, like surfing, which I highly recommend, it's like a surf town, so you might as well learn, um, was Monteverde, great for zip lining or just like having a day trip. It's like beautiful scenery. Like the road trip up there was amazing. It did take a few hours to get there and it was like, Deep. like oh my god like, I wasn't sure about car was gonna make it it was like going up like this and it was like rocky and bumpy and I was like mm, but we were fine so that was like mm, you know fun but like a little bit scary like, going around like really like tight corners and stuff I was really glad that I was not driving um Manuel Antonio which was like I said the um national park I loved that trip it was amazing that was good fun I mean it wasn't you know Nicaragua or anything but it was a good fun and I would do that again um, going to see the turtles, they have like turtle watching and like turtle hatching and stuff like that. Obviously, depending on the time of year you were there, but I'm pretty sure I, you could have done that while I was there. I just didn't because we ran out of time. Um, the paddle boarding, snorkeling, definitely go and do that through La Oveja Negra. Go do that, you will not regret it. Um, clubs, get around it, bars on the beach, like why not? Like we don't really have that here in Australia, not where I live. I mean, right now there's like one open. Glenelg, but like it's not a normal thing that you can just like get a cocktail on the sand like so you know take advantage of it basically <laughs> and then the last question I had was about prices and like supermarkets and stuff now I can't actually remember off the top of my head um, most things like and that's the thing in the shops most things will have like a US dollars and the colonies so that you don't like get confused and have to like keep converting things like it'll give you both prices I feel like it was probably fairly standard but just like a little bit more expensive than like normal US foods um so yeah like food was like semi expensive but if you just like are smart about it you'll be fine it wasn't that much more expensive to go out and like eat a meal than it was to like buy food and cook it in your kitchen so what I did was like buy like big packets of like spaghetti and like pasta sauce and stuff and cook that up at home because that way like I could save a little bit of money but most of the time we just ate out because it was easier and we were on holidays yeah, I bought like bread and made sandwiches for lunches and things, but and like made breakfast. I had like oats every day. I got like microwave oats and just had that every day for breakfast. And then like pretty much every night for dinner there we ate out. So, you know, like it's gonna cost you a little bit of money, but like in the end of the day, like it's worth it. You're on holiday. Just go for it. I think that's pretty much all of the questions I had. So I hope that answered yours. If you have any more questions, then leave them down below and I'll be sure to get back to you as soon as I can. I will, like I said, link my playlist from like the previous videos, like showing you around the town and stuff. I was originally going to do like a town tour, but I never edited it. I'm pretty sure I never got enough footage for it because I ran into some friends while filming it and I just like didn't finish it. Um, but like the last thing, like the last question I had was like, are you still learning Spanish? So... Basically, yes, I am still learning Spanish. I'm definitely not fluent. I take a class once a week these days, but I have taken a few breaks. So I've probably only done like a year's worth of like classes and that's once a week. Um, and then I've taken like, yeah, like time off in between. So it's been two years, but I've had like one term on, one term off, one term on, one term off. So if you were consistent, then you'd definitely learn a lot more. While I was there, I learned a bit, but it was definitely, I was still at beginner level, and then I came back, and I was, I went into an intermediate one, intermediate two class in Adelaide, and now I'm still in the intermediate two now. My current boyfriend actually speaks Spanish, so I'm learning a lot quicker now that I have someone who can help me, but, um, yeah, if you're not using the language, you're not practicing it a lot, then you're not going to learn much. So, thank goodness my boyfriend can help me out, but, um, or oh, mi novio. But other than that, like, I, I do speak a bit of Spanish, but I would never say, like, I can speak Spanish. So I'm going to get there, but I'm a lot more committed to learning now than I was before because it's just, e it's easy to stop learning and then it gets harder. So if you really want to learn, I'd say throw yourself in, go for more than three weeks. Three weeks really wasn't enough for me to learn much from, like, 
from nothing, you know, to learning anything, but I financially three weeks was about as much as I could go. So yeah, do the best you can and yeah, <laughs> practice as much as you can. Practice as much while you can while you're there and when you get home, sign up to a class straight away and find other people who speak Spanish who you can practice with, whether they're your classmates or get like a pen pal online, like whatever it is, find a way that you can use your Spanish and you will progress so much quicker. So that's all I have to say for now. This has been like a really long video. I told you it would be, I'm really sorry. If you made it this far then thank you. Comment like a world emoji or something down below so I know you made it to the end and I will see you in my next video. Hope you enjoyed and see you next time.